Remember this? Pray without ceasing. The point is, God is with you all the time, wherever you are. So if you're in your own room at night and you got the door shut, the lights off, and you're in bed, God's there. You can talk to Him. When I'm in my car by myself, driving down the highway, God's with me. I can talk to Him. Anytime, guys, pray without ceasing. Just talk to Him. Realize He's always with you. And then the next verse we did also kind of underline that Psalm 46. God is our, remember the word? Like a place we can go for protection. What? Refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. He's there. He's present. He's a present help. He's always with you no matter what the trouble is. Therefore, we will not fear, though the, where we live, the earth be taken away. Removed, and though the mountains be carried to the midst of the sea, so he said, "I'm with you. I'll be there to take care of you, no matter what your trouble is. I'm not going to leave you. I'll be your refuge. I'll be your strength. So don't be afraid, even if it's catastrophic stuff happens. I'm taking care of you. We talked about that before. And then I don't know what's going on right now. It shows I've got some battery strength left, but it's not one to work with. Really. Today's verse, I think some of you will be familiar with this, 2 Corinthians 5. Therefore, if any man be in who? Christ. What does he make us? Uh, what? Not old, but new creature, creation or creature. Old things are gone, passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Yeah. Powerful verse, guys. Here's what God's telling us. Look, when you come to know Christ, there she is. Okay, sure. When you come to know Christ, Here's what happens. You come to him and you say, Lord, I've messed up. I've sinned. I've been very selfish. I've been self-centered. I've lived for myself. I've, I, 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 I've been, I've, I've told lies. I've lost my temper. I've been lazy. All this sin. But I, I know I'm a sinner and I need you to forgive me. I know you died for my sins on the cross. So I'm trusting you, Lord Jesus, and what you did for me on the cross to save me, to forgive my sins, come into my life and be my Lord and Savior. That's what it means to become a Christian. And when you do, he says, I forgive you. Always. He says, I forgive you. Your sins are forgiven. And you say, wonderful. I'm forgiven. I'm clean. And you walk away. But but but, but, but it's like it's not over. Wait, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. You're right. You're forgiven. You're clean. But you need to know what else I've done for you, God says. I've, I've given you eternal life. So you're going to be with me forever. Awesome. Not only that, you're my child. You're my son. You're my daughter. You're going to be with me forever as my child. Awesome. Thank you, Father. Not only that, I'm putting my Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, to live inside you to help you live your life. Incredible. Thank you, Lord. And, and I'm giving you my joy and I'm giving you my peace. I'm giving you a purpose for living. All of that's in the bundle. <laughs> and by in fact, he says, if you're in Christ, you're a new creature. In Romans chapter 6, if you want to get in some heavy duty Bible study, and you can listen to my studies on it if you want to, it's online. But I talk about this whole this whole chapter is about the fact that when you come to know Christ, the old person you once were is now dead, and you're a new person. You're living a new life. You're a new that word creature to me. I, I hear the word animal or something there, but but he's not. It means a creation, something created by God. Some translations say creation or created thing. So we're just he's created us new, and he's saying you're not the person you once were. The old things are gone; they're passed away. All things have become new. Now, does that mean you're perfect? Of course not. None of us are. We're on a pilgrimage, and we've got a long way to go. We've got a lot to learn. And here's the problem. I'm living still. I'm a new man. I'm a new person. I'm a new creature. But I'm living in a body, and, and I'm living in the old flesh. And so uh, there's temptation, and there's sin. And I've still got to fight against it. I've got to get a struggle against it. But he enables me to fight and win, even though sometimes I, I'm, I mess up. So. When I mess up, I need to say, Lord, I messed up again. It's embarrassing. I know I've messed up so many times, but Lord, you said you would forgive me. Yes, I forgive you. You just always got to repent and come to me. Don't start excusing sin. Come to me and, and acknowledge it. So when I do that, he, he says, I forgive you. Satan loves to say, you've blown it so badly. Oh, bless me. Please, please, God, please not have you. you're, you're, you're a reject. You don't really believe or you wouldn't have done this over and over and over. And God says, that's the devil. God says, I know you're weak, child. I know you're weak. All my kids are weak. But I'll pick you up and 
dust you off and forgive your sins and start again. You just must not ever start excusing your sin. That's where we get in trouble. We say, eh, it's no big deal. It's just the way I am. Just, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't care. As soon as you start giving in to sin and not caring and just saying, that's just the way I am and admit defeat, there's a problem, a massive problem. You either, either don't know Jesus or you're very, very confused. So he says, you're a new creature. You need to realize who you are. He didn't say you will be. It's not a promise. There's a promise connected with this. But he says, right now, if you trust in Christ, this is just the truth. This is who you are. You're a new creature. So you just need to admit it. <laughs> Old things are passed away. All things become new. This is just the truth. So it's an awesome passage. All right, let's memorize it. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, 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 he is a new creature. 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 Old things are passed away. 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 Behold, 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 behold. All things are become new. Behold, all things are become new. Behold, all things are become new. Can we do it? Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. That's good. Wow, so good. Therefore, all bold, all things are good. Good job, girls. Okay. Anything you want to say before I pray? Well, thank you, Father, for this incredible passage of Scripture. Thank you for these three passages we looked at today. Lord, thank you for reminding us that you're with us all the time so we can pray without ceasing. We can talk with you wherever we are, whatever we're doing. And thank you for reminding us, Lord, that you're a very present help in trouble. You're our refuge. You're our strength. And you don't go away when we get in trouble. You're with us, a very present help. So we don't have to fear, no matter what catastrophic events might happen. We don't have to be afraid. And thank you for reminding us here just now that if we're in Christ, we're new creatures. We're not who we used to be. That old person is dead. Old things are passed away. Thank you, Lord, that you've created us new and all things have become new. And Lord, you know us. You know we're weak. We, you know about you. We can do nothing. We, you know we depend on you. You know how easy it is for us to fall into sin. Lord, you know how weak our flesh is. And we know we have a, a raging enemy who can be very subtle and very crafty and tempt us with all kinds of things. And Lord, you know we're living in a world that's given itself over to sin. And it's so easy to be tempted by that stuff. But Lord, we know you hate sin. And we want to have the same attitude you do. We want to hate it too. So help us, Lord, never to excuse it, never to rationalize it, but to simply confess it to you and let you forgive us over and over and over and keep us clean, walking with you. Thank you so much for your wonderful promises and the wonderful truths you told us in your word. Thank you for these kids in this classroom. I pray blessings on them. As we head into spring break, I pray that it'll be fun and that everybody will enjoy the time and uh, have fun and make good decisions. I don't know how many are traveling, but I pray traveling mercies for those traveling. And I pray, Lord, that uh, you'll keep us safe and healthy and help us to come back uh, in a few weeks uh, renewed and uh, ready to finish strong this last quarter. So thank you for bringing us through the first three at this point. Lord, I pray for these kids as they concentrate on ACT, either to take it now or maybe a Again, or maybe later on again, help them, Lord, to, to take these things seriously and, and, and internalize as much as they can. And then maybe when the time comes, a few weeks before they take it, start reviewing these videos again. I don't know. But, but somehow, Lord, I pray you'd help them to, uh, to get ready and do the best they can. Help them to use their brains today to concentrate. I know we're talking about some difficult, challenging things, but help them to work, work their brains the best they can and try their best to learn some of this. So thank you for this time we have together. Thank you for loving us and all your mercies. Lord, you're so good to us. We love you too. Help us to love you more. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Let's see. Okay. We did that one, did we not? I think we did. Um, yeah, we did that one. I'm sure we did. 
So the first thing you have to do is put it in slope intercept form, which means you have to solve it for y, subtract that 6x from both sides, divide both sides by 3, and the slope is negative 2. If we were looking for a line parallel to this line, the answer would be f. But we're not. We're looking for an answer, a line that's perpendicular to that line. So its slope has to be not negative 2, but the opposite and the reciprocal. So it's positive, not negative, and it's 1 half, not 2, so it's h. All right, now this one I did not do with you yesterday, I don't think. So do that one yourself. Try to figure it out. Get paper, please. I want you to have scratch paper. I want you to have pen or pencil. Everybody needs to have scratch paper, pen or pencil. If you need some, get some in that drawer up there. But uh, you should have your own or get some there. Let's see. Uh, do me one more favor. Put both of your names on there. I know your names. I'm just doing it for principle's sake. When you do that, put, put your names on there so, that, so I can give you both credit. Did you put a, Did you put your name on there already? Okay, yeah, do, do that for me. I just want you to make sure when you turn those in, you, you have everything I need because I get a stack of them and sometimes I forget. makes it real easy and quick when I can see your names. Okay, you know some time probably, don't you? Okay. Have I got an answer yet? Not yet? Go ahead and work on it. We are going to do chapel first and then we'll do the lunch. So you'll be late to your one o'clock class. Yes. Yes. Yeah, the fourth period, but one right before lunch will be normal. Well, you leave just like a regular chapel day. You're supposed to get out a little bit early on chapel day anyway. Yeah. Oh. Uh, okay. I see. You're talking about after lunch or before lunch? After lunch, yeah. 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 I see. What, what subject is that? Oh, okay. Yeah, cool. Yeah, so you'll have it a little bit later than usual as planned anyway. May not be much later. Depends on how long Nick Nick's talking today. It's been very confusing because I texted Melissa, Miss Melissa this morning before I left home. I was trying to think about finding a song. I said, chapel today? And she said, no, we're having that luncheon. We're not having chapel. And then I got my first class this morning, and she texted me and said, well, I was wrong. We're having chapel, and Nick will be smoking. So that's what they decided to do. Anybody still need time? Nobody? Anybody willing to tell me what you did? 
there's more than one way to skin a cat. That's, that's a bad illustration. It sounds kind of yucky. But there's more than one way to, to solve a problem like this. Does anybody, does anybody, uh, y'all heard that expression, haven't you? <laughs> Have you ever heard that? Yeah. <laughs> no, not really. Yeah. Yes. It's, no, it's, it's, it used to be a common saying when I was growing up. Anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know where it came from. It sounds awful. Anyway, I've got a cat that loves me to death, so I don't want him to hear it. <laughs> anyway, uh, sometimes he needs to hear it. But anyway. Just, but I'd never do it. You know how to do this. There's several ways to do this kind of problem. You have any idea what you might do to solve this problem? Mm -hmm. Just for instruction purposes, I'm going to teach you several ways, okay? But there's several ways you can do it. Nobody has a clue? Go ahead, Lacey. What do you mean, put them together? You mean try to. No. Well, you mean graph these points on a coordinate plane? Yeah, you can do that, but then you got to figure out which one goes on both those equations. So, what did you start to say, Lexus? Did you start to say something? Okay. How would you plug it in the calculator? How would you do it? Can you tell me? Do you remember enough how to do the calculator to tell me how? Yeah. You remember that? Have you done it before? Yeah, yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, I'm impressed, Alexis. That's really good. That's really good. Listen, guys, if you've got a crack, and, and ACT will let you use a TI 83 or 84. Most people use 84s nowadays. It'll let you use an 84. Listen, guys, it, there's a, there's a, what's called a Y register. You can, it, it's got, when you hit it and you hit that Y key, it means Y1, Y2, Y3. You don't need but two of them. But Y1 equals, it, it's, what, it's what you'll see on the screen. You'll say Y1 equals 3X plus 4. Y2 equals 5X plus 6. And then you hit graph, and it will graph both of those for you. And, and I wouldn't expect Alexis to remember this, but, but if you can look at your calculator, you can see it. If you hit second, the second key, second, calc, intersect, It'll tell you exactly where they intersect and give you the right answer, just like that. So it's an awesome way to solve this problem if you know how to do your calculator. You, don't, you probably don't remember, but earlier in the year, I showed you all of this. I had a screen with a calculator screen up there so you could see it. And I showed you how to do second calc intersect. Yeah, so that's a beautiful way to do it. Now, if you don't have a calculator and you wanted to, you could graph it anyway. Let's just, when we're talking about graphing, let's talk about that. Y equals 3X plus 4. How do you graph this? You remember? Without a calculator, <laughs> how do you graph that? You remember how? Where do you start? Yeah, the y-intercept is four. One, two, three, four. That that line's on there. When x is zero, y is four. When x is zero, all you got is four. That line, that point's on there. And then what do you do to graph this? Rise over run. Rise is three. And the run is one. So the, the slope is three. Three over one. So you go out one and up three. And put another point. That's the slope. That's how you graph these things. So then you draw your line. I'm just being really rough here. Do this one the same way. The y intercept is five. I'm sorry, the y intercept is not five. The y intercept is six, isn't it? And the slope is five. Out one, up five. One, two, three, four, five. Something like this. Really steep. Okay. The point where they intersect, now I did that very rough. Don't, don't rely on this. Uh, if you're going to do it this way by hand, you better be a little more careful. I'm just showing you the process, the way you roughly do it. So, and then the point where they intersect would be the place to be the answer. But in this case, I drew it so rough, you can't really tell. So, so that, but it would, it would show you. Okay, that's, that's the principle. Now, does anybody have any other clues about how to do this? Thank you, Alexis. Anybody else have another clue about how you might do this another way? Any ideas at all? No ideas. All right, let me show you something else. I got, there are several ways to do this. 
if you get if you get a system of equations, which is these two equations, y equals three x plus four, y equals five x plus six. Do you remember how to solve systems of equations? Any 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 of those things, those names come up to your mind? Graphing's one of them. You remember the other ways? There's one called elimination, and there's one called substitution. You remember that? Yeah, from your algebra days? Yeah, I think we've done something like that before in here earlier in the semester, before Christmas. But yeah, we, 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 you can use substitution or elimination. And guys, substitution just jumps out at you here. You understand why? Because they're both already solved for y. So I can substitute this for that y, and I get 3x plus 4 equals 5x plus 6. I don't care which way you do it. Subtract 5x, you get negative 2x over here. Subtract 4, you get 2 over there. Divide by negative 2, x is negative 1. And I've gone through here. Wow, there's only one where x is negative 1. That's it. Now, if there were two, I'd have to plug it back in and throw one of these and find y. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. And negative 3 plus 4 is 1. 5 times negative 1 is negative 5. And negative 5 plus 6 is 1. That's the answer. x is negative 1, y is 1. Yeah. That's the way I probably would have done it myself. I mean, it just jumps out at me. Wow, I can substitute one of the equations for the other. You can, it, this allowed the whole through the whole thing on, on the on the on the math test, any any part of it, you can use a calculator. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And some of it that yeah, yeah. Now, on the ACT, you can use that calculator. You can. Yeah, you can. Ma most of the time, you don't need it, but at a time like this, it can be really handy. And guys, I've already shown, if you remember, I've shown you several different types of problems through the year where a calculator can really be very handy and quick if you know what you're doing. Yeah, we may need to cover some of that again before the year's over. All right, uh, there's one other thing that pops in my mind. Now, well, I, I could use elimination. I'm not even going to do that because substitution was so easy this time. But I could use elimination to solve for X and Y. But there's something else that I would really like for you to think about that I wish you had thought of before now, a way to solve this problem. You know what I'm talking about? Nobody has a clue? Mm, you could. That's using elimination, but you'd have to, you can do that. You'd have to. Let's talk about that in just a minute. If you've got y equals 3x plus 4 and y equals 5x plus 6, um, if you subtract one, subtract the equation just like they are, you get 0 equals negative 2x minus 2. Are you with me? Is that what you're talking about? And then you can add 2 to both sides. You get negative 2x, divide by negative 2, and you get 1. That's called elimination. Yeah. So you can do it that way by adding or subtracting both equations. Yeah, one from the other. Uh, yeah, that's that works. Okay. In this case, it works pretty well because the y's cancel out. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay, good, good, Mary. Thank you. Okay. I'm thinking of something else, though. Does anybody else think of any other way? Any other clues about how you might do it? I'm not saying it's the best way. I'm just saying it's a way. No? You remember when we first started talking about math at the very beginning of the year? We we're talking about algebra. And I said, sometimes you could avoid doing the algebra by what? Do you remember what I told you you could do? <laughs> I said, this, well, no. no. Okay, yeah, <laughs> all right. Yeah, okay, that's getting close. Yeah, yeah, we, we called it plugging in the answer. If, if these if these numbers are numbers down here, many times you can just plug them in up here and find the one that works. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> now, now, if these are if these are algebraic expressions, they have x's in them, the y's or something, and you also have x and y's. You have to pick a number and plug it in and find which one works and make a match. We did that the first part of the year. Yeah. But yeah, no, I'm just talking about just a way to get the answer. Now, now you got to be really careful right here. Listen carefully. If you plug these in, remember there are two equations here. They have one point in common, but you'll have to put them in both equations. It has to make them both work. See what I'm saying? 
So here's what I would do. If I, if, I, if I forgot how to do the algebra, if I, if I forgot elimination, if I forgot substitution, if I forgot graphing, uh, here's what I'm going to have to do. I'm going to plug a 3 where the X is and a 4 where the Y is. 4 equals 3 times 3 plus 4. That's ridiculous. 9 plus 4 is not 4. You don't have to write this down. You can do it in your head. Go to the next one. Negative 2, don't get the X's and Y's mixed up. That's the Y. Negative 2 equals 3 times 2 plus 4. It's not negative 2. 2 equals 3 times 2 plus 4. That's not 2. 1 equals 3 times 1 plus 4. I'm sorry. Negative 1. 3 times negative 1. Did I plug in the wrong numbers down through there? I did, no, I did it right. Did it? Yeah. I realized I plugged in the Y instead of the X. So the X is negative 1. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3, and negative 3 plus 4 is 1. So that one works. But you can't just stop and assume that you found it. you got to try it on this one, too. So again, y is 1 equals 5 times negative 1 plus 6, negative 5 plus And that, that works. So it worked for both of them, so that's my answer. And I found it without doing any much, much math. You see what I'm saying? I just plugged it in. So that will work, guys. You just have to make sure to test both of them. That was a good, good little problem because it forces you to learn or it gives you the opportunity to learn several different possibilities. And let me go back to that graphing thing one more time. Maybe and just just pretend that I didn't know how to use a calculator, but but I did know how to graph. Uh, let's let's draw just a little bit more careful and see if, and see if it kind of makes sense here. I've got I should have taken a more time while ago. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Why is three x plus four? One, two, three, four. Out one and up three. Draw the line. Why is five x plus six? Uh six is the y intercept. Five is out one and up five. One, two, three, four, five. And I draw the line. Now, I didn't draw it very well again. And if I just read it off this, I might say, well, it looks like the answer is somewhere around negative 2 and 0 or 1 or something. There's nothing like that up here. But watch me. 3, 4 would be 3, 4 right here. It's obviously not that one. 2, negative 2 would be 2 to the right and 2 down. It's obviously not that one. 2, 2 would be 2 to the right and 2 up. It's obviously not that one. Negative 1, 1 would be 1 to the left and 1 up. And that's fairly close. One negative one is one to the right and one down. The only one that's close is that one. So I drew it very rough. But I looked, but I just plotted these points and realized, I, okay, I, I was rough. I, I was freehanding it, so it was not accurate. But this is this has got to be the right answer. And then I might test it to make sure. Okay, several ways there, but it teaches you a lot about linear equations. Okay. Now, see what you can do with this one.
Anybody got an answer yet? Let me give you a little more time. You might need more time. You might get an answer. E. e? Yeah. Okay. I got a, got a B and an E. Anybody else get a different answer? Anybody else get one of those answers? Anybody else? Okay. Now let me show you what to do here. Oh, oh, oh. You want to tell me what you did? Either, either of you? Okay. All right, let's see if we can put them in slope intercept form. Is that what you're saying? Put them in slope intercept form? All right, the first one looks like this. You got to have the Y by itself. So, how do you do that? How do you get rid of the two thirds? Yeah, divide by two thirds or multiply by three halves, the reciprocal of that. Multiply both sides by three halves. You can get Y equals three halves X. Of course, the Y intercept is zero. There's no B there. This one, 2Y plus 5 equals 3X. I got to subtract 5 from both sides. And divide by two. And what does that tell you? I don't mm -mm, it's not A. Hmm? E? Yeah. You know why? I don't understand. How do you know that? Zero? No, it's not because one zero. You drew the right conclusion, but you used the wrong reasoning. <laughs> I'm glad you got it right. <laughs> it is E. Now, can anybody tell me how you know they don't intersect? What is it that gives it away? Can anybody look at those two things and tell me? No, nope, that's not it. I appreciate you trying. Can anybody tell me why these two lines do not intersect? The slopes are the same. Slopes three halves. Slopes three halves. The slopes are the same. Now, guys, listen carefully. Listen carefully. If when you put them in this form that had the same y-intercept, you know what the answer would have been? Are you listening? If when I put them in slope-intercept form that had the same y-intercept, in other words, if this had been 3 halves x minus 5 halves up here also, do you know what the correct answer would have been? D. They're the same line. If you graph one line and then you graph the other line, they're right on top of each other. So they're, they're tr it's true at every single point. Every point that's true on one line is true on the other line. Every point that makes one line true makes the other line true. You see my point? So, so that would be infinitely many points. But they don't have the same y-intercepts. This is not true. They, they have different y-intercepts, so they're just parallel. So if you graphed the first line, for example, the y-intercept is zero. You go out two and up three, and you graph it. The other one has a y-intercept of negative five halves. That's down here somewhere. But you still go out two and up three, and you graph it, and they're parallel. They have different y-intercepts. If they have the same y-intercept, it would be the same line. Yeah. All right. Um, Am I making you happy? <laughs> Probably not. But am I telling you stuff you need to learn? Yeah, I really do. <laughs> All right. It's not necessarily fun, but this is the stuff that's on ACT, guys. Okay. Let's see what's next. Why is my clicker not happy today?
Maybe it shows it's still got battery power, but maybe that's the problem. Let me see. Uh, I think what you're thinking about is on the uh, on the on the English test, not the math test. Yeah, yeah. On the English test, there is often an answer that says none of the above or all of the above, and it's it's not always. I wouldn't always guess that, but but it's at least as likely to be true as the others. So you you gotta you gotta realize that it's true about a fourth of the time because there's four answers. Yeah, that may be what you're thinking about. <clears throat> okay. Um, let me check my batteries here. Let's see. Yeah. Try some new ones. Seems like I'm going through batteries a lot lately. Hmm. Yeah, that helped. Oh yeah, it helped a lot. Okay, I'm about to shift gears here a little bit and talk about circles again. And because it's close enough to stopping and because it's the last day, I'll go ahead and stop today. Um uh, I'll tell you, I'll take just a couple of more seconds to just introduce you, but we won't do any problems. Like, we'll introduce you again after the break. I'll, I'll do this again. Standard equation of a circle. Do, do, have we done this before? Any of you remember what the standard equation of a circle looks like? Okay. I, I, well, the circumference is, yeah, that, that has to do with circles, but this is a little bit different. I'm talking about on a Cartesian coordinate plane now. Yes. Wow, I am so impressed, Mary. How did you do that? Yeah. Just stuck in your brain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that reminds you of it. Yeah, that's that's exactly what it is. H, X minus A squared plus Y minus K squared. Oh, oh wow. Yeah, yeah, it was R squared. That's a radius squared. Uh -huh. Mary deserves a hand for that. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's good. I mean, those, those equations are not easy to remember. Uh, I'll just say this about that real quickly, which means. By the way, if H and K are zero, what does that mean? Do you, you know, the center is H and K. So if H and K are zero, what does that mean? Yeah, the, the circle is right in the center. The, the origin is the center of the circle. Okay. So if X squared plus Y squared equals four, the center of the circle, H and K, K are both zero, the center would be right there. And then... The circle would look something like this. Radius would be, no, nope. <clears throat> let's pretend I said 16. Because it's a, this is the square of the radius. Yeah, so the square would be 4. So, so the, the radius R equals 4 in this case. Okay. Yeah, and but usually the circle will be somewhere else. So that H and K tell you where it will be. It may be over here, the center it may be over here. It could be anywhere. We'll do some problems like that involving that equation when we come back. I think we've already done a few, but we'll review it again a little bit more. Okay. All right. You ready to go? Ready to pray? Father, thank you for these kids. Thank you for this day. Thank you for the opportunity to live for you today. Help us to live well for you. Thank you for the way they worked hard today and tried to learn this stuff. I pray you bless them for that. I do pray for chapel today that it would go well and bless you. And I thank you for the the uh, luncheon we're having today that uh, Miss Sarah Beth's class is taking care of, and I pray for blessings on them. And I pray that uh, you'd help us to fellowship well and, and worship you well and listen well and learn and grow stronger in Jesus. Lord, be in charge of this all day long. Uh, help us to stay in this battle you place us in. Help us to bring you a lot of glory. Uh, help us to rejoice in you. Help us to not lose your joy or your peace. But thank you most of all for Jesus who makes all this possible, this relationship we have with you. So help us to just uh, be a blessing to you today. Thank you for loving us so much. Help us to love you more. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you guys. Stay in the battle.